Good morning and welcome to the Miami Memorial Library Storytime. I'm Mrs. K and today our story is Hilda and the Mad Scientist by Addie Adam and pictures by Lisa Beesing. Just to give you a little start about what the story is, big-hearted Hilda just loves to be helpful. She even wants to help that mad scientist, Dr. Wienerstein, who is rumored to make monsters in his creepy mansion on Vampire Hill. Weird Dr. Wienerstein doesn't want Hilda's help, but that won't stop this dauntless do-gooder. While Hilda is busy cleaning, cooking, and trying her best to take care of him, Dr. Wienerstein cooks up something to take care of her once and for all. But the result is not exactly what the doctor ordered and even scarier than what he imagined. This goofy tale about a monstrous magical mix-up is sure to cast a spell over you and cause lots of giggles. Hilda was loved by all. She had big muscles, big feet, and best of all, a big heart. She always said, people should help people. And she always did. I go where I needed and stay until I'm not, she told everyone. So she used her big muscles and big feet and helped the baker carry his cake and pastries to the king. I go where I'm needed and stay until I'm not. She huffed as she carried the trays up the stairs of the castle. She helped the butcher, the street sweeper, and everyone else who needed her. And when she heard that weird Dr. Wienerstein was suffering from rheumatism all alone in his creepy old mansion up on Vampire Hill, she wanted to help him too. She filled two baskets with food, announcing to the townspeople, I go where I'm needed and stay until I'm not. I will take care of him until he doesn't need me. Hilda's friends begged her not to go. He's a mad scientist, said one. He makes monsters in that creepy old mansion, said another. Fiddle faddle, scoffed Hilda. Nobody can make a monster. And with that, she picked up her baskets of supplies and headed toward Dr. Wienerstein's dilapidated mansion on the hill. When she arrived at his door, she wiped her big shoes on the mat, which actually said go away, and lifted the heavy door knocker. Bam! 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 The door creaked open with a horrible groan. Hilda stepped inside. The great hall was filled with dark shadows. Dr. Wienerstein, she called. I'm Hilda. I heard you have rheumatism, and so I've come to cook your meals, clean your house, and make your rheumatism better. Go away, said a spooky voice from somewhere in the darkness. Can't, Hilda replied. I go where I'm needed and stay until I'm not. She wrinkled her nose at the cobwebs hanging from the chandelier. And I'm certainly needed here. (laughs) 
Suddenly, a man in a black cape swooshed down the long, curving staircase. You really shouldn't slide down the banisters in your condition, Hilda scuttled. I didn't. I flew, Dr. Wienerstein said. Fiddle faddle, said Hilda. People can't fly. Now, show me the way to the kitchen. What you need is a good meal. What I need is to be left alone, he snarled. But Hilda kept right on walking until she found that kitchen. And if you don't go, he shouted after her, I'll have an evil spell to make you disappear. <laughs> but Hilda... Oops, forgot to show you the picture. But Hilda had no time for such nonsense talk. There was work to do. She pulled groceries from her basket and began to cook. Soon the whole house smelled of roast beef and vegetables. She was singing as she finished rolling out the dough for an apple pie. So she did not hear the scientist creeping up behind her. He held a wand over her head and chanted, Perish, Perilda, vaporize Hilda. Nothing happened. Hilda held out her big hands, covered with flour. See, I'm still here. Dr. Wienerstein stomped furiously away. Later, he tiptoed up right beside her and dropped a spider onto Hilda's pie to frighten her away. A poor little thing, Hilda cooed. She carried the spider outside and set it on a rose bush where it could spin webs and catch bugs. He grumbled as he watched Hilda use her feather duster to clean away cobwebs in the dining room, on the table. He blinked like an owl when she threw open the shutters and let in some light. And he sputtered when she chased his pet bat out of the house. Can you imagine? At dinner, he reached for a piece of apple pie. Hilda made him eat his broccoli first. She made him brush his teeth, what was left of them, and go to bed early with a hot water bottle at his feet. And to help cure his rheumatism, she made him wear long, woolly socks. They kept his legs warm but they also made him itch a lot. Finally, after a week, Dr. Wienerstein had had enough. He clumped up the stairs to his laboratory, muttering, I can see I will have to use my master plan to scare her away. He chuckled. <laughs> As he looked around his laboratory with its flasks of purple pom-pom poison, thick brown swamp mud, powdered bat bane, deadly yellow choke damp, black eel eyes, and white snail tails. Now all I need is my monster-making machine from the roof, 
I'll just go up and get it. He flew up the back stairs as Hilda climbed up the front steps, carrying a mop, a bucket, and a feather duster. She stepped inside the laboratory. What a mess! What a smell! She exclaimed. She sniffed the flask of purple pom pom poison. This great juice is spoiled. She smelled the other flasks and wrinkled her nose. Everything in here is spoiled. I'll just have to get rid of it all and bring up some nice fresh food from the kitchen. So she did. Soon the flasks held grape juice, chocolate milk, cornstarch, lemon soda, raisins, and macaroni. But the mad scientist didn't know that. As Dr. Wienerstein lowered himself down through the roof, with his monster-making machine, Hilda was just leaving the laboratory. The scientist mixed, stirred, and chuckled. Now I will make my monster. It will be my scariest ever. It will frighten Hilda out of her wits and out of my house. He dumped the potion into the machine. The lights blinked off and on and sparks flew around the room. Finished! The mad scientist shrieked when the machine stopped sparking. Now it's goodbye, Hilda. At that moment, Hilda, who had been mopping the stairs, appeared at the doorway. Did I say you, hear you say good night, Hilda? She looked at the clock. You're right, it's time for bed. I have told you to go, but you would not listen, the scientist growled. Now I have made a dreadful, scary monster to chase you away. Fiddle faddle, Hilda scoffed. Nobody can make a monster. But her eyes widened as she watched the scientist pull open the top of the machine. On a slab inside lay a great bundle wrapped in bandages. He started to unwind them. First, the feet appeared. Your monster's feet are big, like mine, she said, admiring her own feet. A dreadful scary monster has to have big feet, the scientist snapped. He unwound more. Hilda smiled. How nice! A monster in a dress! And it's just like mine! Do all of your monsters wear dresses? Something's wrong with this recipe, the scientist muttered and began to sweat. He unwrapped faster.
Finally, the bandages were all off. And there it was. The monster! Hilda was so pleased. How clever of you. You did make a monster, and it looks just like me. Now I can go back to town to see where I need it next. And you, you will always have someone here to make you take your naps and wear your woolly socks. She didn't understand why Dr. Wienerstein was screaming. At the door, Hilda turned to wave goodbye. But the very mad scientist did not notice. He was staring at his monster, who was cleaning up the laboratory. She made long, busy sweeps with her big arms. Flasks flew through the air and crashed on the floor. Hilda just sighed contentedly. I go where I'm needed and stay until I'm not, she said to herself as she walked back to town. Now she would never have to worry again about Dr. Wienerstein. He would always have someone to take care of him. I hope you enjoyed today's story. It was a quite fun one really scary at all. Well, here's a scary page for you to color, Dr. Wienerstein. And here's a nice picture of Hilda that you can color. We couldn't quite think of any crafts, but as we were talking about it, I thought perhaps mom or, or grandma or your guardian could um, whip up a Play-Doh recipe unless you happen to have Play-Doh around the house, and you can make your own monster, or several of them. I hope you do, and you have a great week. We'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye.